Let's talk about the RTX 4070 Super. So I borrowed this RTX 4070 Super from a friend and I wanted to test it out and see how it holds up in 2025. With the new RTX 5000 series GPUs out, a lot of people are probably wondering, should you still buy this card or is it already outdated? So in this video, I'm going to show you the card, talk a little bit about it and then test it out in 5 demanding games at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Let's get into it. So here it is, the RTX 4070 Super. This one's the Palette Dual OC model and honestly it looks pretty clean. It's not one of those like triple slot monsters so it fits really nicely in most cases and it doesn't need crazy power either. It has this hole at the top for even more cooling which looks really cool in my opinion. You've got a single 16 pin connector on this model and I really don't like this connector because it just looks really weird. Why do we need to use this adapter? Also on some more powerful GPUs like the 5090 or the 4090 it has like melting issues so I'm not really sure why didn't Nvidia just buy Bother sticking to the 8 pin power connectors. But anyway, under the hood, it's running 7168 CUDA cores, 12GB of GDDR6X memory, and it's built on Nvidia's Ada Lovelace architecture, the same as the 4080 and the 4090. The TDP is 220 watts, which is actually super efficient considering the performance you get. The LSS3 is also here, which adds frame generation, and it's huge for games like Cyberpunk or other single player games. The frame gen is not as good as on the 5000 series. GPUs but for some single player games it's really good in my opinion I'm not sure why do people hate on this feature. Alright let's pop this thing in my rig and test it out. So for the benchmarks I tested 5 games in total at 1080p, 1440p and 4k. You can find the timestamps in the description or just on the progress bar to which games you are most interested in seeing and you can just skip to that part. All the games were tested on the same system you can find the full system specs in the description. I kept the settings consistent usually at ultra or high presets with DLSS turned on and no frame gen. Let's get into it. I'm just tired. I can't face it.
Okay, so as you can see, the 1080p performance is just overkill at this point. In every game, Counter-Strike 2, Fortnite or Cyberpunk, the RTX 4070 Super easily pushes over 100 FPS even with ultra settings and ray tracing where it's available. The only exception is Oblivion Remastered which sits closer to 60 to 70 FPS but that's at max settings with DLSS enabled. Now moving to 1440p, this is really the sweet spot for this card, you're still getting smooth high FPS in all games and thanks to DLSS and supported titles like Cyberpunk, the experience is just buttery smooth. Even Oblivion runs decently, not, not ideal but definitely playable. And at 4k though, things get a bit tougher. You can clearly see that from the chart only esports titles like CS2 and Fortnite stay above that uh, 60 FPS line. And in heavier games like Cyberpunk and GTA 5, you're dipping into the 40s and 50s. Still playable with DLSS but you probably want to use frame generation to smooth things out. But here's the thing, using frame gen at 4k isn't perfect. You do get more FPS but it can introduce some input lag and weird ghosting depending on the game. For single player games it's fine, but in competitive games I'd still prefer native frames without the frame gen. So yeah, to sum it all up, the RTX 4070 Super is a really solid card in 2025. At 1080p it's overkill for pretty much everything, and at 1440p it's exactly where it shines. You get high FPS, great visuals, and with DLSS and frame gen most games feel super smooth. And even at 4k with some tweaks and DLSS it can still hold its own in a lot of titles, especially the esports stuff. If you're gaming on a 1440p monitor or planning to upgrade to one soon, this card is still a great buy. Especially if you find it used for about 400 to 500 dollars, then it's definitely a great buy. Especially as the RTX 5000 series recently launched, these older 4000 cards are going to get cheaper in the used market. Oh and by the way, I have made a very similar video testing out the RTX 3070, so if this card feels like overkill for your setup, maybe you're just gaming at 1080p or trying to stay on a tighter budget, that video might be useful for you. The 3070 is still a solid card in 2025, especially around the $300 mark. It handles most modern titles just fine, even with the ray tracing in some cases. So if you're considering something a bit more affordable, check that one out. I'll leave the link on screen and in the description. Thanks for watching and if you want to see more content just like this, consider subscribing.